Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today with this little journal that I put together. It's made mainly from Tim Holt stuff and a few scraps. You'll see some of my previous projects decorating it. And you can make this from one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. The cover that is. It has a pocket on the front, a pocket on the back and two pockets on the inside. So, yeah, I've zoomed in a little bit just to show it you. So I'm trying hard to stay in shot. I've just filled it with scraps and bits and bobs that were hanging about. No rhyme or reason. I've not decorated the inside. Uh, I've just bobbed stuff in. <laughs> just to show you that it is a journal. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make the cover. And we may decorate front. I don't know. You might have to fast forward to see whether I do that. All depends how long the cover's going to take. So, without further ado, let's crack on. So, here we go. I've got my scoreboard out. I'll just touch it down so you can see top. And I'm going to make it from this paper. Uh, if you're sensitive about some bits of your paper being upside down, then use some non-directional paper. I don't mind that with Tim Holtz. I've said that many times. If you look at this one, that's upside down. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. You don't even notice. So many elements on the Timmy papers are sideways like that, for instance. Really don't bother me. Right. So put your paper in. Face up. The front of your journal is going to be this area here. And let's score. So we're going to score at three quarters of an inch on this side. Eleven and a quarter inches on this side. For those of you with scoreboards that <laughs> start with your note at that end, that one should be pretty easy because the score's the same at both sides. You'll notice I've got, it's a bit damaged my sheet, but that's going to be covered, so I'm still going to use it. Right, then we're going to turn it to the right. Yep, yeah. so that's the top of your paper. Then we're going to score again at half an inch. I find this really tricky to do half inch, so excuse me if you can't see me. If I'm making this on my own, I'd just turn it round and score it from that end. But by doing that now, I might confuse you. I might start flipping. Too much flipping, flipping. Now, next score is three inches. I've just got a bump then. I've got a bit of glue on my scoreboard there somewhere. And the last score is eight and a half inches. Oh, don't forget the... Uh, I nearly forgot my middle score for my spine. Nearly forgot my spine. So let's turn that one back round. <laughs> we just forgot to score the spine. So then we're going to score at six. Right in the middle when you've turned it back to the first direction. Score at six, then an eighth of an inch before six and after six. So you've got three scores there, all an eighth of an inch apart. So it's five and seven eighths, six and six and one eighth. Yeah, don't forget your spine, woman. If you don't want a spineless journal, well, you can do a spineless journal. I've just seen Laurie at um, Enchanted Dreams 71 do a lovely spineless journal. Ooh. Right, now you can see that is going to be our front and I'm quite happy with that foot front, I like it. So, I'll just show you how I come up with these ideas because it might help you. People have asked me, how do you come up with all this? And this is how I come up with it. I grab a piece of paper and I start folding and I start messing. Now this was going to be a teeny tiny little flip and it ended up being a full journal cover. You can see it's crease marks everywhere. Because I was like, oh, what if we do that? And that, and that, and I obviously didn't come up with it straight away. And then I'm like, ooh, that looks like a cute little journal. But the paper's too flimsy, and I've got crease marks everywhere. So then I grabbed another piece of paper, and I folded it to the dimensions we then ended up with here, almost. And like that, so that's going to come down. Like that, and like, yeah, love it. Again, too flimsy, but if you're concerned about messing up your nice paper get yourself a piece of paper you're never going to use for anything in a million years 
and do your score lines first and see whether it works yeah because i don't want you getting this wrong and messing up your lovely paper i mean i go from one extreme to other me i've like measuring well i don't like measuring then i give you this with all these measurements but yeah get some old paper practice your measurements those measurements will be all up on the screen as i did them so as not to confuse you and i will also put the cover measurements in the description so we've done all that scoring now chuck scoring board away well not literally i will place it gently on the floor right let's do a bit of folding so fold those either side where we scored like that I don't worry about things getting a bit bulky and bunching up at this point. I'm going to show you how to eliminate all that. Fold that one there. We'll fold this one here. And that one there. And already you can sort of see that's our journal. Now that's the inside. That's upside down. Not a bother. I will grab something pop it over and you won't see that that's upside down not go up to hand at a minute like this let's just grab a ticket from some timmy ephemera that's too big so let's grab a smaller one that, <laughs> that one just goes the wrong way oh woman what are you doing do you even know what you're doing i'm really not sure you do yeah i mean that's sideways and already you've covered up the upside downness anything you put in these pockets will cover that up that's sideways and i quite like that so don't let that bother you right the spine then i'm just going to take this and fold it over i'm not really interested which one it folds on because if you can see it just gives you that it's like a little dome yeah now you can see these bits are sticking out now to eliminate that, grab some scissors. First, we're going to cut these corners off here. Just up to the score line. Like that. That gets rid of that one straight away. That bit of bulk. Then there. Do that one. Then you see these others you've got. I'm going to cut little V's, but don't go right up to the score line. Small V's about, yeah, well, nearly a quarter of an inch, an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the score line. We're just eliminating a little bit of bulk where we're going to fold. You will have noticed I didn't do that on my prototax. It was thin paper and didn't need it. So if you're making one of these out of thin paper, you perhaps won't need it. So that's gone and again on this one now we'll fold that up that's going to make some difference but there is still something else we're going to need to do so fold in again in in over up down now you know i've got that damage bit there i'm going to glue that actually just while i think on because yeah it's going to get covered up but i don't want it to end up getting caught when i start putting things in and out of my pocket you won't have to do this mind you having said that this tim Holtz paper is a pain sometimes for damaging on that top edge when you rip them out of the uh, pads aren't they so this is a good project so that you can still use the full 12 by 12 sheet and that is the one bit that will be hidden so yeah right then we fold that up right let's fold it in a bit now you'll see already that's not sticking out as much as it at either side so this is the point at which i'm going to come in and do a bit of bone folding right, i'm going to open it up i'm just going to bone fold that lightly on that one more firmly on the top and bottom edges we're just manipulating this paper so it behaves a little bit more like we want it to right so we're back to having some stuck out so open it up and this is the bit that's sticking out here isn't it so take that 
and we're just moving it over can you see how i've just moved it over slightly and recreased that yeah so it's not 100 percent straight but i hope you get this bit so just move that bit over ever so slightly just manipulating it and we're going to do the same with these two here move it over just ever so slightly it's not even an eighth of an inch i don't think it's even a sixteenth it's just so that bit's not going to poke out and be annoying. Same again with that one. Right, then we're going to fold it all up again. And let's have a look, see. Look at the difference now. We've manipulated that less than a sixteenth of an inch and all of a sudden that's just about spot on. Now I'm just going to move that over line all my four corners up this is why so it, i don't always bone fold everything straight away me i like to leave it i'm just going to use my thumb i want that center crease to be a bit more pronounced and there we go we've got the journal yeah now it's time for a bit of gluing to make sure it's not going to fall apart so the first bit i'm going to glue is that And this one. And I hope I don't offend some of the YouTubers saying this, but you know all this manipulating bit? They're the bits you quite often don't see. So you'll see a project, it'll all go wrong, and you'll be like, hmm, how come theirs look good? Because you didn't see that bit. It is one of my bugbears, I'm afraid, so sorry to anyone who's done that. But I doubt you're watching me anyway. So, we've glued in all those four bits. Now, before I glue anything else again, I always like to keep checking that everything is going to plan. Me happy with that. So, I'm quite... I'm, oh, I'm just going to put another V in here just to take a little bit of that bulk out. Again, I don't go right up to the crease because if you do, it can then look as though it's tearing in the middle. There you go. Especially on this, because this is journal cover, and everything is at least two pieces of paper thick. Whee. So we'll glue that one. This is like your bottom pocket, so it's reinforced it. Now You'll have noticed, I'll come back to original journal, we've got a couple of pockets here. Don't disappear on me, mate. That's just not fair. Here we go. And I've not done out fancy. I've just put one of them teeny tiny Timmy clips on a photo just to stick it in so there was something there. Like I said, I've not gone to town decorating this journal. It's just the journal in the front I've concentrated on. So we need to turn that into a pocket where things are not going to go sideways and fall out. And the way I'm going to do that is with glue. Of course it's with glue. So, get this top bit now and we want to put a continuous line of glue all the way along. And that will seal that so it's a separate pocket and things aren't going to fall into the middle of the journal. I'm even on camera for this. What's my lighting like? It's okay. It's one of them days here we've got some cloud. So sun's like coming in and out from between clouds and it makes a huge difference to lighting for me. Right. I'm a happy bunny with that. Grab my dried up baby wipe to do my pressing. There we go. When you glue that down as well, you'll see that looks not quite as near on that edge as that, but what I have lined up are my three score lines in the middle. They all line up perfectly. So pay attention to that. Whenever you score any piece of paper, it can go a little bit skew if depending on how you then place it down. Just kind of, it's paper, it's not iron. Same again with this. I'm now going to glue 
just up this edge. I'm just going to put a bit more glue under that because I didn't get enough. Talking, talking. Did I even glue that down? No, I forgot to glue it, that's why. Yeah, before you glue top down, just glue that middle edge. There we go. Wee. So. Up there. Up there. If at any point you want, can you see how things are coming unstuck? Because I'm moving from one step to the next pretty quick. If you want to just pause between gluing each section just to give the glue time to set, especially if you're not using art glitter, if you're using regular PVA that doesn't dry as quick, you might need to pause between each gluing step. So then it's this is the bit I want to get stuck because these are our inside pockets. Right now I'm very conscious that we've done a lot of folding and a lot of manipulating there. And in time, opening and closing this journal, that could just all go wrong. It could come apart. There you go. See, as I open that, can you see that wants to come off? Right. Here's where I thought, hmm, closure and what can we do about that wanting to come apart? And what I've used for my closure are these. We are memory keepers, Brad's, yeah? So that goes through all our sections of paper it helps crimp them all together and stop them coming unglued so i'm just gonna pause and find mine because i don't know where i'll put them and i'll show you how to do the closure i'm also gonna let this glue dry just for 10 minutes so i'm back now it's been a good 10 minutes you can see they're not coming undone yet i mean if you wanted to you could go and stitch around the perimeter of this journal but i'm conscious not everyone's got a sewing machine so not everyone wants to right and i've got these these are the brads these are in my amazon storefront the by making memories they're the people who make the crocodile and i've got to be honest i do use their brads when i'm putting them on covers and things because they really are really good quality and if i just show my original journal again that's the back of the brad that i've got on the front now i've not done anything to that other than put it in with my crocodile and it's completely smooth you're not going to rip your skin on it or lose a finger because i just like that detail on the inside on this one and i didn't really want it on the outside the embellishment is enough detail there i think so i'm just finding a couple i've not got a lot of bronzy ones left ever i should have just found color i wanted while I will pause, but that would have required forethought and planning, which are not always my strong suits. So I'm just grabbing any metally looking ones. Here we go. I might use copper on this one for a change. I don't often use copper, so I've got a lot of the copper ones left. Yeah, do a bit of copper. I'm over having to make all my metal adornments match. I just use random ones now and I'm liking it. I think I've used black, bronze and silver on other journal cover, but you'd never know. Look, we've got a black brad, a gunmetal clip and a bronze clip, and I just like it. Right, how I get my embellishments, my closures where I want. Right, I want that to show like so. So then I grab myself a brand new pencil with a long point that should fit through here. So I apologise for making you sharp my pencils. I don't want it too far in because the further in, the more pocket you lose. So I think I'm going to go there. And then, so that's where I'm going to punch that hole. So I'll grab my crocodile. I'm using this side, which I always get confused with names of these. Three sixteenths. They're the big brads, if you're not using We Are Memory Keepers. And I've set this to the depth that I want. And that depth happened to be mm, a sixteenth over half an inch. So it's half an inch and a sixteenth. That's just where it happened to be. I think this one not going in as far as last one i'm just going to set it at half an inch that seems okay and i'm going to use my pencil mark to punch my hole and then i'm going to put my first brad in there we go and let's set that 
a lot of people ask this, so I'm using the... Oh, I can't see it. My eyes are too... It's A. <laughs> Whoa. Get to opticians again, woman. A and 2. That's what I'm setting this brad with. So you put the A through there. And let's set it. Don't squeeze too hard at first. See? Yeah, that's fine. Now, to get my front one, put my book back together. And I'm going to draw a little circle through that brad that I've already put in. And that'll make sure that they're both about the same place. And to make sure they're both same depth in, I've got this depth thing set to half an inch. Well, I had till I moved it. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's wrong all size. Sorry, woman. I've got that set to half an inch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can be a bit crazy. Where's my... <laughs> That's my big hole. See, it's so easy to get confused with these things. And yeah, I can see that the hole I've drawn is right in the middle of that. So I'm happy to go ahead and punch my hole. Then I'm going to pop that one in. I mean, if you want that on outside, go for it. do not matter. As Timmy would say, you do you. And let's squeeze that one up. And that's lovely. And there we have the journal cover. And I think, do you know, because I've got the three lines there, we've done that little bit of manipulation there. It's behaving quite well. Now this is the point where I dare do a little bit more bone folding. Once all my edges are in. Right. Also, you'll notice what I did on this one is I've used some Timmy tape on the spine. Some of the Tim Holtz fabric tape. You don't have to, but you can. If you are going to, which one shall we use? Uh, again, this is all Happy Mail. I Yeah, I'm using a lot of Tim here lately. I've had such a lot in Happy Mail. And it's like, wow, thank you. I think I want the ticket one. Because this one's like random uh, ledger paper bits and bobs. It's for a pack of two. Have I got the packet out? I did... Tr I was... Yeah, mindful of keeping the packets out to show you. That's not it, is it? That's my little paper clips. It's it's on my Amazon storefront. I think I've thrown the packet away for that. Silly woman. Because they're really good to make ephemera from. Anyway, I'm going to use the ticket Timmy tape. Timmy ticket tape, yeah. I was surprised when I unfurled this. I thought it were quite thick and it isn't. The backing for the tape is much thicker than the actual tape. Very strange. Well, no, it's not very strange. So I then take a piece. You can also decide. Do you know, I'm not even sure I like the colour of that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Because we've got red there. I like it. We'll put something else red on front. Now, I cut a bit longer than I need because I'm just always scared of not having enough. And to place mine... I take the backing off the actual tape. It's not curly once you've got backing off. They don't do they go a particular way, them tickets? Yeah, that's the top of the ticket. But again, if it goes upside down, the world is not indeed going to end. And it's re if you get this touching itself, it will stick to itself. It's the stickiest substance in the world. Look, I have trouble, look, I'm having trouble getting my finger off bottom, but I did it. If I'm off bottom at camera, I apologise. Utch up a bit. Oh, we're utching now when we're stuck. <laughs> ow, ow, get off me, get off. Oh, it's like when you get a bit of plastic stuck to your foot and you can't find it to get it off, innit? Now, this is how I place it to make sure I'm going in the middle. I open my journal up and I'm lining my creases. I'm not measuring, I'm eyeballing. But it gets it straightish. That's my... Straightish is what I go for these days. I've given up on straight. Now, if you want, and you wanted to fold it in and over, but it might make it a bit bulky, cut yourself a bit more off. I'm personally quite happy with cutting this off flush with top and bottom of the journal. If it frays, yummy. All the better. I like a bit of frayage. I'm not cutting it longer, though, because I don't want it to stick into other stuff now i found myself with these in my hands when i did last one and i'm like what shall i do with them so i just stuck them 
in fact yeah that's how I did one I just stuck them on journal for no reason other than they were there I'm getting very random in my old age try not to cut your paper when you're cutting that off as I tried to then I'm just going to take that really ratty bit off because it might make it start to curl up and I'm going to pop that one there if I then stick something else over it all well and good that's the wonkiest tip position that I've ever done. Yeah, it's, be mindful it's quite stretchy as well. That'll do. I'm happy with that. Get your bone folder, make sure it's not going to come off and stick to what else. There you go. So they're there just because I had them. Now this is our journal cover. You will see it's not, it don't want to behave till we've got everything else on it and we've opened and closed it a few times but I promise you it will so what did I do yeah I did that once I bent, bent it like that yeah that's it and that just that's it it softened up my spine a bit then once that were on can you see it's starting to behave now and want to be a journal cover yeah let's get some papers in it yeah we'll do the papers Oops. Stay, stay. I might have to refilm me uh, intro so that we know what's actually in the journal, don't we? So all I put in it was some random bits and bobs. So I'm going to grab my random papers and I'll show you a new... Well, it's not a new way. It's, it's a new way to me that I came up with of ripping my papers to size. So two ticks. So I'm back. I've got a whole mess of rubbish on my desk. And we're going to make the signature. So this will this work for any journal. I decided because oh I never even told you the size of this little journal did I? It's cute. Is it five and a half? Yeah, five and a half high by five and nearly a quarter wide. That's because I've put those. It would be five and a quarter if I'd not done three uh, score marks. So my papers wanted to be when folded. The biggest one was five. And the height, the biggest, was five and a quarter. That was smidging over. That were a mismeasure. So we're going to cut our outer page like this to five and a quarter by five. So I've decided that's going to be the one I'm going to use. So I'll fold it. And I'm using my scoreboard. So I'm going to move it along and fold it at five. Now I do do this, but do you know... I've never done it for every piece of paper in a journal because I'm then taking it off and cutting it with trimmer. But I just didn't bother with this. Things got ripped. The only one that got cut was this one. And I think I might even rip it this time. So the back sheet is going to be folded in at five. There you go. Job's a good one. And that, then I got my big fat chompy measuring ruler, which is wide. So then I've put that in. Do I want that? No, I want the holes. And I move that along to five and a quarter, which is the height of my page. And I just ripped. Done. Sorted. That's my front page. What do I want next? That's... I don't want that. I've got some other book page here. This is... If you buy any book pages from my Etsy shop, which is closed at minute, this is the kind of thing you get. I always say with that, I wouldn't sell you book pages, I wouldn't put in a journal myself. And I'm going to have this full height as well, which is, I'm going to do this a smidgen under five. I don't know why. I always like my outer page to be the biggest, and not everyone does. I don't want any foldy flaps on this, so I'm going to place it at a smidgen under five. Because, as you know, or you may not know, as you keep putting all these papers inside each other, each paper gets pushed out a little bit further. So each one progressively needs to be a little bit shorter. So that's that. So that's going to go in there. That's two. But a lot of these pages are different sizes anyway. I've now got these that are scraps from other projects. I'm going to pop that one in next don't even know how many pages I've put in that other one. I'll just keep going till I think that feels thick enough. So I'll have that one. Then I've got some music paper. This is already cut to size-ish because 
it's the other half of a sheet that I've put there but because I'm putting it further in the journal I think I need to make it a little bit shorter Ooh, that might not work I've got another sheet now let's try because I only want to rip a smidgen off this so I'm going to try it this way just going to place my ruler to where I want it when you're only ripping a teeny tiny bit off you've got to hold it really tight really tight to have hope of it working that works I'm a happy bunny height wise it's a little bit over five so again I want to take a teeny bit off the height I'll take it there I'll have this as a shorter page there you go that's another page in this journal I'm liking this rip look I'm getting more grungy in my old age so we've got that then that then that yes I mean, if you want to write on these pages, you're obviously going to have to gesso them or stick a piece of tea dyed or a label, but you may be putting pockets on or whatever. What next? I think I might put this in next. That's just a piece of paper out of a notebook. I like it, so I'll put it in. Then I grab myself a guest check. I put one in the last one, so I'm going to put one in this one. I didn't make that one. In fact, I'm going to put that before that, so on the back of the journal we see the thank you. Then we open the page and see that. Yeah, I just like that. That makes me happy. So, I want a bit more. I want a bit more tea dyed, I think. What have we got? I've got a... This is obviously from when I cut the page down in my last journal. Yeah, I think I'll put that one in next. That's that. Then I want a more full size piece. That's not going to be big enough. I've got a full sheet here. So I'm going to, we'll have a fold out flippy flap as well. Now I want, I'm going to make this four and three quarters because by this point in journal, pages are going to be, need to be shorter. So I'm going to fold it four and three quarters and fold it over. Then I'll fill my flap in again at four and three quarters. Can you? I hope I've got my camera so you can see it top at scoreboard. Yeah, you can. I had an awful thought then that you couldn't even see what on earth I were up to. Would not be the first time. Then that looks good. Then I'm going to turn it round and rip it for height. Uh, I'm going to make this a smidgen shorter. I'll make it four and three quarters. I might even, I'm going to pop it there actually and then we can have that one I'll put the foldy flap on that side there now you see that that's sticking out because on my other journal that's it's the other half of that yeah so I'm just going to have to alter it I need to rip a little bit off there I'm just finding this scoreboard and ruler really good for ripping and measuring. It's a lot easier than things sliding about on my mat. And that, I'm just going to move it in and crease it again. I don't mind that we've got two creases there. That's better. Now let's see if that fits. Yeah. There we go. Now, should we count how many pages we put in this? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I put a butterfly page in. Oh, I did, yeah. I've still got some more butterfly pages. So let's have a butterfly page. Well, the moths. So, get the ruler back. I'm going to rip this one this way first. I want the top half. So, measuring from top down to smidgen under five. Ripping. Then you decide if you're going to rip it off or if you're going to fold it in. I'm just going to rip this at four and three quarters. Yeah, we've lost Tipper a few butterflies' wings, but I still think that looks like a nice little page. And these are quite thick if you want to cover them up with something else that's a bit chunky. So, 
pop that there looking good and I think I just want one more little book page in the middle I've just grabbed handfuls here oh that's from oh it's another dictionary page oh we've got a bit from a logarithm book again I think that's the, fir the bottom half of the page I used in first journal it might be a bit wide because I'm pruning it in the middle oh no it's just okay so that's it we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine i've got ten in this one hey ho so i do appreciate that if you're used to putting your pages in your journals that might have been like a lesson in sucking eggs but I, again i'm conscious i've got a lot of beginners watching at minute so that's why i'm doing this that's our pages we're going to use. What I've used to sew in is just my black wax linen thread. I don't even have a proper book binding needle. I'm using what my mum used to call a bodkin for embroidery. It's got a big eye and it's not too sharp. I'm going to grab about three or four lengths. That gives me enough room to tie a nice little bow in the middle three or four lengths the height which I suppose it's nearly five this the height of your journal spine let's bring the journal in before I do before I do that I'm just going to rub some ink on that because I won't be able to do that after I've bound the journal well I can but it'll be much more difficult so I just folded that back on itself a bit not too much we don't want to break the paper I just want some muckiness there. There we go. And one there. We can do the rest of that later. Right. So I've got my pages. I've used my use a big chompy book method to bind them. I know I've done this quite a few times recently, but again people who are beginners have said it's handy that I keep doing it rather than them having to go back and find another video so the bits that you may not know how to do I've covered at the beginning and then the bits that may only be any good for beginners are towards end and I think that works well if you disagree let me know or don't let me know <laughs> not a problem right so I've got a big chompy book and I'm sort of using middle of it like a book cradle so everything's just rammed in. I then turn it that way because that way I can see whether my pages are sticking out top and bottom. These aren't, so I'm a happy bunny and I'm good to go. Now I've got an awl for stabbing my pages. All my tools are right, nice and tidy on the right hand side of my desk. Then I've got paper out, started chucking stuff around and I can't find stuff. Right, check your pages at right way up. I'm good at getting them upside down. Yeah, they are. And then I don't bother measuring. About middle, I stab. Stabby, stabby. And then about an inch and a half down, I stab. And about an inch and a half up, I'm going to stab again. Bit further, woman, bit further. There you go. Whee. Then I find my needle that by this point I've usually put somewhere on my desk and lost. Oh, I've got my cotton. Oh, I didn't thread it, did I? I didn't thread it. So I'm just going to stick me all back in that centre hole so everything stays <laughs> where I want it to be while I thread my needle. Then I'm going to look for my needle. I will find my needle and I will thread my needle. There we go. Now I'm going to tie a bow on the middle on the inside. So take that back out, throw it or place it gently. So I'm going to go through there. There we go. Then you can go back in top or bottom, don't matter. You hope that everything is still lined up. If you've put a clip on to hold it, there's more chance there it is. But yeah, if you just put a clip on at that point. Let's just re rewind to a point where I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, 
you can put a clip on like so. If you can get your pages together like, you know what I mean? I don't like putting my clips on until after I've got everything stabbed like this. Because sometimes everything just stabs all wonky and we don't want wonky stabbage. So that's that. Leave yourself enough to tie your bow there, missus. Wee. Then we're going to go back in that hole and hope everything lines up. <laughs> I'm fortunate. Go back to some of my other videos where I sew signatures in and you'll see this is a fluke. A complete fluke. Now I can take clip off. Right, now this last bit needs to go in there. So you're going in the same hole that you first came out of. I'm just going to tighten everything up a bit first because it's all gone a bit wonky. And that should all be lined up for going in. I can feel it on the back of my finger. And wow, I did it. So at this point, you want one thread on either side. Now, if you've watched me before, again, you know normally both mine come out the same side. So if it comes out wrong side, just pass your thread under that middle section. Then pull it, not so tight that you rip your paper. Don't pull it like an angry baboon. And I just like to do one knot on a bow. That's me. Because I quite often like to dangle things off the bottom of my strings so you can leave that or just cut it i'm just going to make it so that my ends have that length and there we have our little journal see it's a bit springy it will get less springy with a little bit of wear and when we get some weight on that front cover i do promise you let's give it a little Plenty opening and closing. Just work it a little bit. Work it. Oh, that makes me think of eight is um, aerobics videos. What a bad time. <laughs> now, the closure I've made with, let me grab it. It's like some faux leather cord. Um, it's not real leather. It's faux leather twine. Fake leather twine. Now, I didn't even measure how much I used. I just tied it through and guesstimated it. So let's give you people a measurement who want to know the measurements. So how long's that? That is... Half of it's just over nine. So doubling it makes it 18. If plus it were a bit more. So it's a 19, 20 inches you want to cut off your twine. And then you want to do that twice. So you want two lengths that are about 19, 20 inches, depending on how much you want left to tie bows with. Yeah, that's been left tied up as well, so that also helps to make it stay closed. And just thread them through. through that hole. I mean you could close this with a big chompy paper clip. You don't have to put ties on. I just like the look of it. We'll put one on the back page. I'm quite liking that copper for a change. I think it looks good with that red and these the tones in this paper. And then Just tie it in a bow, and that's your journal closed. That was crap bow, but I did it. <laughs> oh, rubbish bow, rubbish bow. I don't say that word on camera, sorry. A scrap bow. <laughs> right, so there we've got our journal. Now, these bits here, I just grabbed some of my, uh, what they called, Tim Alt's found relatives. I've lost some relatives I wouldn't ever want to find again. I don't know about you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm being mean now. I'll put them two in. And I just grabbed some of these little Timmy clips. This is just so cute. And I popped one on the top end of that. One on the bottom. These cards may be subject to change though. I might put something else in. And then I've popped 
one in the front I think that weight also helps to make it behave and one in the back and yeah we've not even decorated front because it's bank holiday Monday here in UK tomorrow I will spend tomorrow decorating the front and making a few little embellishments to go inside you will have noticed on my other I used one of my twinches yeah that I made in Melina's challenge a few weeks ago so that's just a couple of bits of ephemera we've got a bloke sat on that postcard a twinchy and then I was just messing and I liked that it's one of my faux jigsaw puzzle pieces I made in another video I'll link those two videos it's got a flower on I like it I just loved that butterfly sat behind his head I just did so that's why you got decorated like that so I'm going to leave it there for now you can decorate the front however you want you may have got a much prettier paper and not want to decorate the front you don't have to so that's how we made the journal and I will link to the other bits I've used where I've made videos and I'll be back tomorrow with some decorating of the front and some ephemera for inside so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time bye